Welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Pelican Built Tough. For all situations, go to pelican.com. Yak Gadget. For all your fine kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. Eastport Marina on the beautiful shores of Dale Hollow Lake. For all your lodging, kayaking, and fishing needs, go to eastport.info. Now let's get this show started. What's up, guys? You're listening to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. I'm your host, Brad. And tonight, well, this episode, Josh is not with us. He has some stuff to do. So I brought in Matt Stowers to guest co-host with me. What's up, dude? What's going on, man? Happy to be back. Not just a interviewee, but a co-host. This is awesome. Heck yeah. Uh, it's like your third or fourth time now, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's my, just from different shows, I think it's like my fourth time being on, I know it's my second time being on, no, third time being on your show, and then I was on, uh, 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 what was that show? Oh, Armando's. Name? Armando show, yep, I was on yeah. Armando's show at the very, very beginning, I think it was beginning of 2020, so yeah, yeah, it's been awesome. Heck yeah. Um, for all you guys who don't know who Matt Souders is, uh. He uh, got into kayak fishing within the last few years, and he's been uh, trying to get into the whole game. So uh, give him a follow on Instagram, Matt Souders Fishing. So, uh, yeah, dude, anything new with you? Oh, not a whole lot. Getting ready to, we, you know, just got back from the Columbus Fishing Expo, working down there with Loveland, and uh, I got my eyes on the new P127. So hopefully I'm in that boat this year. That's the plan. But uh, no, I'm just getting ready for fishing season, getting a bunch of. It's the beginning of getting everything on my new tackle and stuff, finding more baits. I don't, you know, necessarily have to have, but I have to have them at the same time. And then uh, <laughs> just getting everything ready and doing what every, I feel like every uh, angler, tournament angler does for season and overthink what you have and what, how do you got to change your setup to work better for you? So, yep. Um, well, I don't spend as much in tackle as you do, but I understand completely. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, Guy. everybody already knows that they heard the episode before this <laughs> yeah. uh, uh we got a uh ep- cool episode planned for you guys we're bringing uh john thomas back on from yak gadget he has released a ton of new stuff since the last time we've had him on uh welcome to the show john what's up guys how's it going what is this like your fourth time too now i think so at least yeah i mean you keep coming out with new stuff and it's like Oh, we got to have him back on to talk about it. <laughs> well, it, you know, if that's the case, then you'll probably have me back another six or seven times this year. Because <laughs> that, hey, I'd love right. to hear that. I'm I'm all about that. I mean, I'm I'm happy to come on, but I tell you what, people would love to hear what you're bringing out because you constantly bring something new out and changes the game of kayak fishing or kayaking in general. Well, I appreciate it. You know, we're just trying to, you know in our minds stay relevant, you know, to a lot of the needs. I mean, you know. That's one of the reasons why I went on a tear this year on the um, Fishing Expo circuit. I've done five shows out of the last six weeks. I started in Cincinnati, and then the next week went to Raleigh, and then the next week went to the East Tennessee Fishing Show, had booths at all those shows, took one week off, then did the Lebanon slash Nashville Expo, and then uh, came up and did uh, did Columbus. And then uh, in two weeks from today, I'll be in California for the Fred C. Hall show uh, in a combo booth with Scout 365 as well. So we'll have the Yacht Gadget booth, and right next to us will be Scout 365, which they make a lot of uh, rubber boat products. That's awesome. Very cool. I didn't know you are going out to California this year. Um, Do you have a lot of customers out that way? Well, we do. Uh, It's growing, you know, and Mm -hmm. and I think the thing was we – we were talking about it, and um, Graham uh, Key, who is owner of Scout 365, he's in uh, New Zealand. And right now, New Zealand is in complete lockdown with COVID, oh. and you can get out yeah. of the country. But if you leave, they will not let you back in, Whew. whether you have COVID or not. The country is locked down. It's going to be like that. So for him, um, America is a big part of his business, and so he's mm-hmm. not going to be able to be there. And so he wanted me to come down and kind of co-represent 
our company, his company, and also, you know, his pros are going to be there and some of his other staff will be there. They just couldn't be there all the time. And I can. So um, it gave me a great opportunity to kind of unleash our stuff to the West Coast a little bit more, you know, for a lot of mm-hmm. people who may not know us quite yet. And also uh, going out there and visiting some dealers, trying to, you know, doing some mm-hmm. dealer acquisition as well. That's been another big focus for this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we have some dealers already, of course, but um my goal is to increase that number by 10, you know, 10 times mm-hmm. um, what we have now. And I, and I, it's entirely possible because everyone we're reaching out to, we're, we're, we're in year four of our company. And I think we're getting to the point now where, you know, when we call dealers, it's not a hard sell anymore. It's kind of, mm-hmm. it's more about, Hey, is this stuff available now? Can we get it now? We kind of <laughs> need it right now. Yeah. And we just, uh, we just finished up our uh, 2022, dealer catalog we've had some uh price adjustments and we've had some other things so we're we're about to unleash that to all the dealers as well i know there's some dealers that work with us currently that have been very patient with us and Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be getting that stuff as early to them as early as tomorrow because we've just been so busy with these shows i got back uh on monday i actually drove back sunday night from columbus i was there Mm -hmm. with you guys of course and and i was in the booth right next to loveland Yep. And uh, I decided just to drive home that night, and I haven't oh. done that in a long time. So <laughs> it's really making a long haul. Yeah. What time did you get out of there? Uh, well, I got to give a big shout out to Raccoon Creek. Um, mm-hmm. The guys at Raccoon <laughs> Creek up in Albany, Ohio, uh, Dustin Hoy and his crew, Reed uh, Carpenter, um, and Robert Weicker, I mean, all those, you know, uh, Michael Jennings, I mean, all those guys. There's too many to name because they are all awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. And they cleared out their booth pretty soon. And they were they were pretty much wrapped up around four o'clock. And uh, they saw me and they were like, hey, brother, what can we do? And so all the guys like pitched in and had my tra- trailer loaded up by like 415. Nice. Uh, that's awesome. And uh, they were just, they're just wonderful. I mean, they're just like great people that, you know, they wanted to help me make sure I got out of there, you know, right after they did. And uh, Dustin actually got my truck and backed my trailer because where that, where that spot was, you had to go through this covered area where you had maybe six inches of clearance on both sides of the <laughs> yeah. truck. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, he's backed up a trailer a time or two in his life. So he, he got it in there pretty good for me. I mean, I've backed up a few trailers, but, but that particular trailer moved a lot. So he adjusted it really, really well. So we just got everything loaded up. And then I got on the road. Uh, I had to go back to my hotel because I just decided to, I usually stay the night that, that I work a show just to give me a fresh, you know, more fresh on the road. And, you know, it's about a six hour drive from Nashville. And uh, I just got on the road about 4.45, a little bit before five o'clock, got home a little bit after 11 o'clock. You know, mm. because we, we, you know, we, uh, we uh, made up an hour. Um, and so, yeah, it, it all worked out pretty well. Um, you know, but I was tired the next day. It's kind of, oh, I believe it, you know, oh, I'm yeah. 49 now. So it's, you know, it, it stays with you a little bit longer now. So when you do that stuff, so, but no, it, yeah. was, it was like you said too. I mean, like you guys said, it, it was a great weekend and, and working the shows. It's just been so important to us because I, to me, it's more important than I cast. Um, you know, and I'm not putting down ICAST at all. It has its merits and values, but Mm -hmm. for, for me as a business owner, talking to the people that buy our products is the most awesome thing ever because they tell you what they like or dislike about the product and they tell you what they want. And Mm -hmm. we have a choice whether we listen to them and deliver or, or we discard it, but you know, nine times out of 10, I'm listening to, well, uh, 10 times out of 10, I'm listening. Nine times out of 10, I'm able to execute based on what I hear. Mm -hmm. Um, And doing that, I think has only made our products better. I think it's only helped us grow our business. I think it's helped us grow our reach. I think a lot of people have considered us to be more flexible than some of our larger competitors. Uh, And I think we've been able to create a lot more meaningful gear because of that i mean it all comes from it all comes from the customers it all comes from them so yeah that's what i was getting ready to say when just talking to you at the show and watching you you know because i was 
bouncing between the booths just you would I, I you'd say hey can you go watch the booth and you've been talking to a customer about a product about what they were thinking and be like oh you know this is what i like about this product what i don't like about this product and you were really just invested and i think if a lot more companies did that they would be more successful in the long run um i mean just about everything that i've ever seen from yak gadget is not only uh what's the word not only makes being on the water easier but it makes everything more fluid as in everything has a place, everything has a purpose. And it's not, not a gimmicky item. Like mm. it's, it's, you know, like when I saw the, and I'm sure we'll talk about it when I saw like the catchboard holders or something as a tournament mm-hmm. angler, these are uh, like life changing. And as someone who's lost a catchboard, which I've talked about on the show <laughs> before, someone who's lost a catchboard overboard because I didn't have anywhere to set it. Uh, I mean, stuff like this is just, it's, and I'm sure you you listen to the customer, or listen to somebody yeah. say, "Hey, if I had a catchboard holder that could hold, you know, and as as simple as this concept is, but if I had something I could put my catchboard in and it had yeah. a place or a home, it would be yeah. way better." So you know, well, I appreciate you know I appreciate that. I think, like you said, I mean, we look at you know if we look at a bump board grip like that, if I'm going to design something, I'm going to go on the water with it, and I'm mm-hmm. going to see if it makes sense. There's a lot of you know. <clears throat> hog trough or catchboard holders out there on the market but the thing about it is they require precision when you Mm -hmm. put it in and you take it out it's not a quick grip it's not i can grab it real quick out of a holster do what i need to do with it and then put it back and so that's where a lot of that comes from again it comes from consideration of the function and also again listening to what the customers are saying man i just want to be able to grab this thing quick i want to be able to do what i need to do and then put it back and mm-hmm. I don't, you know, and I don't want to have to worry about losing it or whatever. I mean, you know, with a product like that, you know, we make sure we put tether points in it so you can tether your board to it. Mm-hmm. And then we also make sure, we, you know, we put some bungee cord in there to be able to tie, you know, lock it down quickly. And so all those things matter. I mean, all those little points of design, it's, it's just being considerate to the people that have got to use it when they buy it. And I can't yeah. expect it. Yeah. And I can't expect anyone to buy our product if we're not being considerate to their needs. And we're not uh, addressing what we feel needs are while we're on the water. I mean, all this is really born from us being out on the water and going, man, I wish I had that or I wish I I wish this worked this way or that way. And then we take that and we compare what our thoughts are, because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what we think. We can like our products, you know, when we create them at the shop all we want. But if we're not listening, if the other end of that is not customer focused none of it matters so we Mm -hmm. we kind of go okay we you know the gears are spinning in our head we come up with what we think is a good idea we think it's easy to use based on our standards but then we take that and compare it against what what the customers think then they go on the water and tell us what they want or what they like with it and uh you know and that's why we do so many different iterations of uh, or versions of our products um because they evolve over time Mm -hmm. because again with our crate, it's a great example. You know, we did a crate when we first started that only held three rods. And actually at the East Tennessee and the Columbus shows in 2020, we got asked, will it fit a Hobie? Can we can we do 3,700, you know, trays long ways? Can it do this? Can it do that? And so now you see that product. It's a much different, more, you know, more thought out product now because of that. And we have different versions of that crate now because of that. So mm-hmm. all, all this comes from you guys, you know, it all comes mm-hmm. from the people that use it all the time. I mean, I mean, I can think about things and I can think something's a great idea, but at the end of the day, if no one's wanting to buy it, it doesn't matter what I think, you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. But you, you also have that kayak angler mentality because you are one yourself, which is pretty right. cool. 100%. But Going back to that, uh, the precision thing, like you mentioned, like catch boards, having all that, the precision mounts and everything that l- people don't understand that that limits you. That limits the places that you're able to put it and store it and yep. all that. other. Cause those precision mounts, they kind of get in the way of other functions of the kayak. Yeah. I mean, I can, as someone who's used a, a, a different mount, it was it can only go in like two or three places yeah. at a time and all the places it can go are like the most, like one of them I had went on my cockpit tracks. And if I had a fish on that side, I'm having to fight my catch board now to get to it. That's right. Yeah. Uh, which just, it, it leads to, cause believe me, I've lost a fish doing it that way. 
yep. and I was smack it in it, the head. And I, I mean, yeah, I mean, it either, it, and when I hit it, it literally popped the hook out of its mouth. You know, depending on yeah. the technique you're using, you might not yep. have it pinned very good or whatever. So, like with these, I mean, it comes with. I mean, you thought about, hey, let's mount it to your your crate, and that completely gets out of the way. And yep. I saw it at the show. I never even thought about doing that. And I was like, well, that gets out of the way. It's got a place, mm -hmm. and I can get to it easy. I mean, it's just little things like that that you think about. Like Brad said, you you, you have that kayak angler mentality backing a lot of the stuff that you make, and you it's it's evident. You can see it because everything's functional, and at the same time, it works for you in a way that's completely customizable to how you fish and how you kayak. So, yeah, I mean, you know the. I don't know how anyone else does it, but whenever I catch a fish, first of all, I get really excited because it don't happen. That doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> but when I catch a fish, I mean, you don't really have the time to think it through. You kind of have to have your plan in place. You have yeah, to yeah. have the ability to get your stuff quickly and, and do what you need to do because that fish is doing what we would do in that situation. It's fighting for its life. You don't have all day. And so... Yeah. If you have these holders and these different things, you know, I've, I've seen another one where, you know, they're having it where it's under your seat. And that, you know, it's a nice idea, but it's like when you're, you better have that planned out because when you have a fish, especially a good size one, that thing is going to fight you. And then it's got two things. Number one, it wants to get off that hook. And number two, it wants to get back in the water. So it's not going to be calm. You know, we yeah. do have another product that helps you with that, with the yak well, uh, you know, that's that's been a product that, you know, we've had for, out for a while. But, but you know, that's the thing. It's like, I want to be able to just grab the board real quick, put it down. Want to yeah. do that maybe one or two seconds, then be able to get that fish down, try to hold it still, you know, have my camera mount, you know, with my ID card showing on the board, all that. I mean, you have to have your plan. That's the other thing, too. It's like with this holder, you can have it with your ID card on it and have it out yep. of the way. And that way yep. everything's ready when you're storing it, you know, under your crotch and you know, you don't have room for your ID card. You don't have room for these things, you know? So it's like we, or, or if it's in a precision mount where it's in your you know front of your cockpit, like you said, that's in the way of your casting. That's in the way of your throwing in. And, and again, this isn't a slam on any other product. It's just, it just shows you, if we're going to make a similar product, we're going to, it's going to be different and it's going to be thought out to the point where, you know, in, in other words, why make it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, exactly. If it's already been thought out. Why make it, you know, unless we've got, you know, unless we're adding three different functions to it, which, you know, I'm going to show you guys, you know, a product that you saw in person tonight where, you know, at the show, I'll, I'll show that tonight where we, where we kind of use that same mentality, you know? Um, uh, uh, why make it if, unless it's going to be way different, vastly different and perform a function perhaps better than some of the other competitors on the market. And that's what we try to do. Heck yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, here, I'm going to, I'm going to share these before we uh, jump off the bump board, bump board holders. I'm going to share them for, uh, people on YouTube. So I'll just share screen share this right here for a few seconds. I'll yeah, definitely show that second picture. Yeah, we got yeah, and we have three different versions of that. So that's for the that's the one that goes on the side of the crate, the mm -hmm. our low pro crate, and then we have two other options which are freestanding. One is a track mounted accessory. That's the ninety degree angle. That one right there is the Hobie, okay, uh, H rail uh, version, which has been really popular. I've sold the crap out of those at every show. Uh, you know, especially when I take my my link my Hobie links with me and I. I show that on the A trails that I have installed on the links. It works really, really, oh, really well. Like that. That's a yeah. true holster right there. I mean, if anything, it's optimized for Hobie. We're we're gonna make some different changes to the uh, ninety degree track mounted ones, but um, but those have been really popular. I mean, I sold out of them at the show. I sold every one. I yeah, had. I remember we talking about that. All they were they were just gone because I was talking to oh, yeah. a customer. I came up and asked you. He was like, "Hey, do you have any more of these?" They're like, no, man, I sold out of those. Like yeah. the beginning <laughs> of the second day. <laughs> I did. I, I, I a lot of things. You know, the the flex rod holders. You know, I mean, yeah, that's another thing. Could not keep them in stock. We just, I mean, we brought a lot of them too. And I mean, uh, even on Friday, it wasn't super busy, but I kept selling. You know, those flex rods at the East Tennessee show and at the. Uh, at the Franklin show, uh, not Franklin. I'm sorry, it's been a it's been a long time. 
uh, the Lebanon <laughs> Nashville show. And both of those shows, it was also another hugely popular item because, you know, we, we had them mounted on the boats that we had displayed. Another big shout out to, to, um, to Raccoon Creek for letting us use a Slayer Max 10 5. All of our products looked really great on that kayak. And also on the P-127 oh, yeah. and the Loveland. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every time somebody came up to that kayak, the first thing they pointed at was the flex rods. They were like, what are those? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was a crowd favorite. I will say yeah. that the the way that P-127 and the, the Slayer Max was kitted out, I mean, it was yeah. like you couldn't, you couldn't look the other way without – that's really diving in i mean that's what i was about to say that slayer max Sweet. was kitted out awesome <laughs> i mean it, it, it cool. had it had the bump board holder it had the flex rod stagers it had the anchor the, pull in the, back. Uh, the anchor pull in the back and it had the which i'm sure we'll talk about tonight the anchor mount on the side for your track system oh yeah which that was on our on the p127 in our booth that was a big you know they were asking about the uh flex rod holder and then that and that was huge um, yeah. and with it being, you know, what it is and how long it's been out, it had a ton of, just a ton of people asking about me like, Oh, that would be great. And people asking us, you know, how would you use this and explain it and be like, that would be, that would change how I fish. You know yeah. what I mean? I and mean, people really started thinking about how beneficial that product would be. So. No, absolutely. I mean, you know, you know, it's been a big blessing, you know, to, to be able to do this and go to these shows because we, you know, a lot of people have just come up and they thank us. Or I've mm -hmm. had people say, hey, you know, I drove 300 miles to see you. And I don't even know how to take that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when someone tells you that, I'm like, what, to see me? Who am I? You know? <laughs> yeah. like I would drive 300 miles to see you. <laughs> all day long. All day long. Just so you maybe I'll get a glimpse of something John, new. <laughs> John, you're one of my favorite people, man. Man, that means a lot. I mean, that... that you know, again, I don't even know how to take that, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, I, but I'm, I'm deeply appreciative. I mean, when you talk to people and they, they look at our products and they look at our line and, you know, you have somebody that says, man, thank you for making this stuff. No, nope, nobody was making this this way or whatever. I mean, that just, that warms my heart, but it's humbling. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't know about, I don't know about anyone else that works for themselves. Mm -hmm. But when you work for yourself, you have all these challenges, especially now, you know, and I'm not, I'm not going to bellyache, you know, but, but you have all these challenges and you wonder some days, man, is this really, should I be doing this anymore? Like, is this, you know, you have those yeah. doubts because, you know, yeah, you're sure. running uphill basically, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I told a, a fellow approached me not too long ago and said, you know, he wanted to get into this or whatever. And I told him, I said, I hope you like running uphill, man. You know, yeah, and, and I'm not trying to be discouraging in any way, but I, you know, it was one of those things where it, it is a challenge. And, and, and some days you, you have your doubts, you have your days where I don't know about anyone else, but some days, you know, you go, man, should I keep doing this or whatever? And then I go to these shows and I meet these people and they come up to me and they're so nice and they're, they're so welcoming. And, and they just, they thank me for their, the, mm -hmm. the products, either the ones they already bought or the ones they just bought. And, and, and that makes it worth it. I mean, yeah. and, and talking with you guys and talking with other pros and, and talking with, you know, uh, people that want to join our pro team or people that, you know, believe in our stuff and they want to help promote our stuff or, I mean, it, it just means everything. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it validates all of those mornings where I get up, you know, at four 30 <laughs> in the morning and no one's in the parking lot, you know, and, yeah. Or yet, you know, and then the team rolls in, you know, a little bit later or whatever, but it validates all those days where you're grinding and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're fighting to get plastic or you're, you're fighting to get hardware or, or you're, uh, or, you know, I'm, I'm dealing mm -hmm. with, uh, I fight Ranger boats now for plastic, you know, like <laughs> oh, we're yeah. the number two buyer mm -hmm. of this type of material in, in the city of Nashville, which is, it, which is also crazy. That uh, is crazy. You know, yeah, and, sure. and, and now we're having to buy a lot more of it, you know, in bulk to to stay on the priority list, mm -hmm. um, which is great. You know, it's, it you know, we'll do whatever it takes, you know, so we can keep things rolling. And, you know, uh, the season's starting to become full effect. We're starting to see those orders pour in every day. And I'm grateful for all of that. I mean, I get to do this full time for a living. I don't think it gets better than that. And I've had mm -hmm. I've had so many people tell me I'm living a dream. It doesn't feel like a dream, yeah. A lot of time, but they're right. 
it is. And I'm very yeah. grateful. And, and I don't, I don't take it for granted and I don't take these conversations for granted. I don't take mm -hmm. the, these opportunities that I have to talk with customers for granted. I'm, that's why I do the shows. I mean, I, I probably do it for that reason. That's why people ask me, well, why don't you, why aren't you going to have a booth at ICAST? Well, I can't talk to the customers and, mm -hmm. you know, I, of course I can meet new dealers and I can talk to the media and that's important and that's awesome. And I love mm -hmm. talking to my dealers, but also talking to the customers directly, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. it's a, it's such a valuable thing. And, and I'm going to, yeah, that's going to be a part of our business model until I'm no longer on the earth, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I'd be lying if that stuff never crossed, crossed my mind either. I mean, even doing the podcast, I can relate to you that way. Sometimes I just don't want to do it, but then yeah. you get a good conversation and it like refuels yeah. that fire within you. And you're like, all right, let's do this, man. It's and hard then, work. It's hard yeah. work being in this industry. You guys, y'all you, put in a lot of work, you know, the, uh, mm -hmm. The people that do YouTube, I, I got to work with Alex. Um, if mm -hmm. you're familiar with fishing with Alex down in uh, yeah. down in, down in Miami, he's from Cuba yeah. originally. Um, awesome guy, but you know he came up to Nashville. We shot a lot of videos over the summer. We're going to try to do it again this year. And and when he came up, I had no idea how hard YouTubers work until he pulled out his production list, and we shot for three four days straight uh, for 10, 12 hours a day getting this shot, redoing mm -hmm. this shot, doing this shot and, and, you know, and talking with you guys and how hard you guys work, you volunteer your time mm -hmm. to this and you, you drive hundreds of thousands of miles to fish and competitions, to do all these different things, to do the media, the podcast, to prepare for these shows. You have mm -hmm. families, you have mm -hmm. lives, you have, I don't have children, <laughs> you know, this, this thing kind of is my kid in a way, uh, <laughs> You know, and, and my wife and I, we've been married for nearly 25 years, but, you know, we weren't fortunate to be blessed with children, but we were fortunate to be blessed with the ability to, to, to be self-employed, you know? So, um, so, you know, you, I don't take anything for granted, but at the same time, I see you guys work so hard. This, this is a tough business. You know, mm -hmm. you, you give more than you get. And I think a lot of people think that, oh, I can get in this and make a lot of money or whatever. And I don't want to dispel any myths, but uh if there's a if there's a mound of money somewhere i haven't found it yet uh and if <laughs> i second do, you I'm find it you about to say second you do you let me know where it's at <laughs> uh, hey i'll let you know where it is and i'll share it with you i'm telling you because <laughs> i haven't found it yet it's, you give more than you get in this thing there's a lot more blood you bleed for this and 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 you know what i'm grateful for that opportunity to, to bleed for that you know you, mm, my yeah. dad used to tell me you know if you if you really want something you care about it you're gonna you're going to bleed all the blood in your body for it and you're going to want to do it. And that it's, that's true. It, it's true. It's a sacrifice. Uh, at the same time, there are rewards, but the, but you know, I'm in year four now and I can honestly tell you, I mean, it, it doesn't stop being a, an everyday battle, but you know, but it's also, there's been a lot of great discoveries with it as well. There's been, a, I've learned a lot. I've gained so many new, abilities and skills you know just on the business side and on the production side and on the design side you know mm -hmm. so it, it's it's an awesome thing it really is yeah, yeah. I, I i don't think a lot of people realize how much hard work goes into something and i mean for somebody like you i mean i've known we've talked over you know here and there over the last year and uh you know really getting to meet you during this weekend i mean you're you're probably one of the most humble people i've ever met in my life and the joy of the military is i met a ton of people and just talking to you, you could, you could see like the, the, the passion you put behind this product. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, that's one reason, you know, a lot of guys, you look at, uh, companies and stuff like that and you're like, oh, they make a good product, but they don't really care to know the backstory. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I was so, cause I talked to you a little bit after the show and I was, you know, so appreciative, you know, Hey, thanks for you know, let me come on to the pro team so I can show people what this is yeah. for the simple fact. I mean, I've been using these products for a year and a half before yeah. ever being part of, you know, Yak Gadget. And it's just, it's a company you can get behind because all the hard work I know you put into it. And at the same time, all the uh, like joy and passion that you have with doing it. Um, I mean, it's, it's, you've really made something great that I don't know how anybody couldn't get behind it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, you know, you mentioned the military um, a, little, a little earlier, and that's something that this show season, um, 
I don't want to get too emotional, but I met a lot of veterans and a lot mm-hmm. of guys that were in Iraq and Afghanistan this yep. season. And, you know, I've, I always meet vets and, and I love my vets, man. I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful for the sacrifice. And, and, uh, and I met, I met some that told me some stories that, um, uh, and what they're going through now, uh, and, and the battles they're fighting at on the home front, you know, uh, personal battles now. And, um, again, you know, it, it goes back to, um, how humbling that is to, you know, they're excited to have my products on their boat. I'm like, okay, that's awesome. But what you did for me, for, for my family, for, for Americans put, you put your body in harm's way and you, you put your, you know, your mental stability in harm's way. you you saw things and you, you experienced things you did. Nobody should have to do or see. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, uh, I, it just makes me grateful to be in this industry, to be associated with such a uh, um, such an awesome opportunity to to meet all these wonderful people and to make products that they believe in. They believe in some of the most awesome people I've ever met in my life, and they believe in our stuff. That just I can't even I can't even comprehend that to be honest, uh, because you know those people got up and made a conscious decision to go overseas and fight for our behalf. Mm-hmm. And then they're telling me that they that they're grateful for me. I'm like, no, bro, I'm, uh-uh. I'm grateful <laughs> for you. I mean, I'm yeah. grateful of that, but I'm grateful for them. And so, you know, you mentioned that I, I had to say that because I had some experiences on this on this, um, you know, working some of these shows this year, just talking with with some vets and also talking with some people that got injured in other ways too. A lady told me about her grandson who was fly fishing in Missouri and and accidentally uh, cast it on a power line. Ooh. Ooh. And a 17-year-old kid out there fishing. You know, you could be, I don't know yeah. what you were doing at 17, but at 17, I was up to no good most yeah. of the time. <laughs> yeah. And he's out fly fishing, and he ends up losing his arm and frying, you know, frying half the nerves mm. in his right side of my body. And I'm sitting there, you know, Raccoon Creek brought me over. This Cincinnati show, they brought me over some lunch. They were so sweet. And I was almost crying in my mac and cheese hearing this story. About Jeez. this lady looking at this pedal drop yeah. kind of thinking that would be good for him to get back into fishing. And I'm going, mm-hmm. I have no problems. I yeah. no, I'm doing great. No matter yeah. whatever business challenge I think I have, that's nothing. It doesn't matter because this young man is trying to figure out how to live his life without his right arm. Yeah. This yeah. veteran is trying to figure out how to live his life knowing that he may be paralyzed in three weeks. You know? Yeah. I, I You know, so for me, this has been a wonderful experience to work these shows because it's teaching me personal lessons as much as business lessons as well. And so I'm just thankful, man. I just, you know, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to, you know, uh, veer off a topic, but I just, no, man, all this is connected and, and I'm yeah. brought to this for a reason. Yeah. And I just want to try to keep products that are meaningful in people's hands. And, and so I can continue to have these meaningful experiences because they're helping me grow personally and spiritually uh, as they are, you know, from a business sense, you know. No, that, that's powerful stuff for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. That was definitely, definitely need to be said. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, uh, let's uh, transition into some newer products. Cause, sure. Uh, I, uh, here at the expo, I saw a few little new gadgets that you guys released uh, this past weekend. And uh, kind of want to hit on the uh, Easy Grip Kickout Plus and the... Uh, uh this uh what what is the plate the shallow stick multi-system yeah yeah, yeah it's like a, yeah so kind of hit those two sure well i'll start with the shallow stick one because again that was another product that that we've been asked about you know did we make something like that and uh and lately there's been some really cool innovations there's a couple other people out there making some really cool stuff um but i was like okay if we're gonna make it how how can ours be different and so uh, and I got a, I've got a, I've got mine in my hand, but we'll show that one right there. So what I wanted to do was kind of focus on not only giving you a way to attach, you know, to the kayak, a way for you to, you know, to have a hole to put your stick through to kind of, you know, to, to kind of keep you locked to your anchor pole with these, but I also gave you an option on how to store it. And I also made sure you didn't lose any gear track by adding that slot in the middle. 
it's a pocket cut underneath that allows you to be able to mount um you know, like right here i've got two i've got two of our paddle holders to it so you could have you could have you know um your stick you know you can have your stick being mounted here then you can have your paddle here and then oh, you cool. still have this area right here which is a which is a hollowed back where you can mount a ram ball mm -hmm. so i'm giving you three functionalities right here you know i'm gonna try to get this in the frame better but but yeah so i've got two of my paddle holders here so you still have that that double paddle grip ability or it's also made to go with the regular yak attack rotor grips you know mm -hmm. um i made sure that measured where that clears um a fishing rod holder i mean you can put anything in that in that t slot because i gave you this area here where you can just take take the t nut off of it put it through here and then and then relock it down here um so that allows you to have three functionalities all in one plate. And that's mm -hmm. what we try to do, you know, with, with the products that we create is to not give you one function, but to give you like, you know, three or even possibly four sometimes. Yeah. And that's, what's really cool. I mean, when I first saw that thing, the first thing I saw when I saw the cut out, cut out in the middle, I thought, oh, perfect place for a fish finder, perfect yeah. place for the phone mount with like an extension yeah. arm i was like oh that's that's genius yeah i mean you know I, that's the thing it's like i didn't want you to take room off of your track and not be able to reutilize that that area you know yeah um and yeah. so that's one of the reasons why we did that and then the other thing too was the ram ball thing um to be able to put a ram ball in the middle you know like a one inch ram ball and you can still mount your you know your phone holder there or even an uh, inch and a half ball, even and and mount a mount a fish finder off of that. Mm -hmm. So you're not losing anything. In fact, if you one of the pictures on the side there, Brad, if you can uh, click one of those. Yep. Yeah, it kind of shows you how it's mounted to the kayak. You know, with the roto grip there, and uh, and then I think the other picture kind of just shows how it goes through the hole, but it just again it just shows you know the the double or triple function of some of our products too uh there was a common question here at the expo about what what size diameter pole can they use for for this product yeah so it's an awesome question um it also led to us making two different variations so we have a seven eighth of an of an inch variation that fits that that hole's big enough to fit you know your parker pole from yak attack mm -hmm. your your uh, yak gear pole, your vibe pole, a lot of your standard poles are seven to eight inch or a little bit more. This this hole goes up to 0.9 uh, inches, so it fits all those poles. And then we made a three quarter inch uh, variation where it works with our pole or it works with a uh, micro uh, micro power pole pin or or one of the um, I can't think of that other brand that's out there, but a lot of your standard three quarter inch poles they they all go in that so i have a three quarter inch version and i have a seven eighth of an inch version as well and i'm not i not only tighten the diameter of the hole but i also tighten the diameter uh, i mean i've tightened the the uh the variance of the of the holders as well so so those holders uh will fit the whatever pole that you put in them in terms of you know if you get the three quarter inch version it will fit a three quarter inch it will hold it it'll lock it in hold it well and then if you get the seventh, eighth version, it'll do that as well. Very cool. Yeah, I just, I love how, you know, you made a product, but you still, like a lot of, you'll see on the market, you, once you put it there, that track space is gone. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, putting that track space there to where I'm, I'm able to utilize it basically twice. Yeah. is awesome. So, yeah. I mean, it, it just gives you a lot more customization and still, you know, not have to sacrifice mm -hmm. one accessory for another. Exactly. I mean, that that's, um, you know, because it, we can make a product, we can put it out, but at the end of the day, you still need to use it with other things because, um, again, you may have more track room, but where you place things usually is where, you know, you're not going to use 100% of that track because some of those items may be too far from you. So it, we like to condense some of the functionalities together so that you can still reach everything. Yeah, um, because it's not just making sure you don't lose track, but it's also making sure you don't lose key track and the key areas that you can, you know, use it while you're out there fishing. Again, we design everything to be used while you're on the water. You know, things, yeah. everything looks great when you're on dry land. 
how does it work when you're out there physically having to reach it and use it and use a lot utilize it you know what i mean and you know like i have an example here i have a section of our pole and i kind of you know kind of kind of shows you kind of you know how it locks in there but then when you're when you're you know behind it you know you could just lift this up and then pry that out really easily and mm -hmm. the same goes for when you're trying to you know when you're trying to put it back in to be able just to force it like that and then drop it down and lay it down and not worry about it so tr again trying to design everything we do to be be easily used while you're out on the water and still be able to lock it back in and not have to worry about it so I, again using it while you're on the water is really key too yep Yep, agree with that. Um, yeah, so we're gonna uh, move on to the uh, uh, easy grip kickout. Uh, another cool little product. Actually, I didn't see this until the very last day, about halfway through. You brought it over to our booth and started rigging it on the kayak. I was like, "Hey, what are those?" Because they're yeah. much smaller than the flex rods. Yeah. So one of the reasons why we made this was, um. You know, some people are in smaller kayaks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a, you know, like a Crescent CK1, which is one of, I think, one of the best kayaks on the market, especially from a paddle sensibility. But it, you sit lower. Mm -hmm. And if you sit lower, our, our, our original flex rods are awesome, but they do sit up high. They're great if you have a pedal drive or if you're sitting in a really high seat. Mm -hmm. But if you're sitting lower, we want it. And you, you're really relying on your paddle stroke area being clear. Then we wanted to give you something where you can still have a nice paddle holder that kicks out from your uh, gear track. But on the same time, we give you that little notch there on the right to put one fishing rod on as well. Mm -hmm. So again, multifunction, but also it, it's more low hanging and it's easier to use, especially on, you know, kayaks like Aliska or the mayfly or um uh, the crescent ck1 or vibe mm -hmm. seaghost 130 seaghost 110 uh yellowfin one uh 120 you know kayaks like that where you're sitting a little bit lower and you and you and the kayak may not be as wide as say like a hobie pro angler but you still want to be able to take advantage of some of these things you can do that with this particular item it, i can't tell you how many times people have seen my picture of the flex rods and they're like, will that work with my kayak? Will I hit my uh, flex rod with the, uh, when I paddle the kayak, I'm like, I don't know. I don't have your kayak. So I can't really tell you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and, and to be honest, it, it really does fit most of the boats. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, there's yeah. one fellow, I cannot think of his name, but he's on the Jackson pro team. He did an incredible video. I shared it off our Facebook. Not too, I think like last week. And, he, and, you know, and I, it's funny. I'm just now seeing some of these videos that were made like six or seven months ago. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he made this video. And what he did was he moved the flex rods in. He was in a, uh, I believe he was in Aliska. And he moved his, uh, all of his, his rods in as far as they can go. Because, you, you know, you can bring them out or you can bring them in. And yeah. then he put his rod that was on the outside where his paddle usually sits and he was able to fully paddle stroke like in 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 rough water the video mm -hmm. showed him kind of in rough water and it didn't affect his paddle stroke at all so the answer is it really does work on just about every kayak just fine but you know like i said we made this kind of flex rod light system uh you know for the people that you know sit really really low yeah. um but but yeah i mean no the flex rod is is definitely the most versatile thing we have made um it fits on all the kayaks out there we have a hobie version as well you know we have one with, uh, that goes on the h rails and, and and we also our regular one works on an outback and it didn't affect my paddle stroke on my outback whatsoever so hmm. and that's a low sitting kayak yeah, it, it is, is a lower sitting kayak and it worked great with it that's cool that's hey that's a good uh good little um example to use for sure yeah, I mean, you know, again, it's like I don't sell anything unless I go out and test the living crap out of it. You know, I made a four rod holder that put four rods on it in the beginning. And, you know, and it, you look, look, you know, it, it's great to have four or five rods, but it was a nightmare. Um, I like to river fish. I like to fish in tributaries. Even if I'm fishing off the lake, I like to go to the edge of that lake in tight coves. And 
uh, having four rods sticking out off the side of your boat, it, it's functional in open water. But when, when you get into fish in these tighter areas, um, you know, I had, I had a couple of nice, you know, I had a nice cash on rod that I kind of sacrificed, you know, in one of my tests. Uh, yeah. So that's why we kind of designed the flex rod the way we designed it. And, you know, you still can take the paddle off and use the, use the, the area for the paddle to hold, to hold an optional third rod, you know, maybe yeah. people may not realize that, but you, you most certainly can. So, um, so I felt like, you know, and we kept the price point under $50, which, uh, a lot of people with the other multiple rod holders hasn't really been able to do. So we, we kind of felt like we kind of hit the sweet spot there with that product. Yeah. Um, is there a, any, uh, any plans to add like a little, another little notch on the other side of that paddle holder? You know, we, we very well may, we're going to look at it again. You know, we'll, we'll have to have a little bit of time to kind of go out and kind of test it and kind of see, you know, how we can improve how can we, you know, improve it? I mean, that very well may end up being like a flex rod light that isn't adjustable. Um, but, you know, when we made the kick out originally, we just wanted to be able to kick a paddle out and, and not be on the rails. And now it's kind of already evolved into like a single, you know, a single uh, fishing rod holder, you know. So mm -hmm. we'll kind of see where that goes with that product. Awesome. Yeah, Man, I definitely anything? know with uh, the flex rod holders, I uh, I don't use it for a paddle holder. I just use it. I have two on basically two pairs on each side of my kayak. And uh, I mean, just like you, we fish a lot of rivers here in Ohio and whatnot. And uh, a lot of that has a lot of overhangs, things along those lines. So when I put those, I can actually take six rods with me on the on the river and have all six of them facing, you know, horizontally instead of vertically. So, I mean, I can get in a lot more tight spots and things along those lines without worrying about a rod tip breaking, which I've had happen, or a rod going in the water, <laughs> which I've had happen. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it just gives you the flexibility. And then if you don't want to take six rods, unlike me, who takes way too much stuff on the river, you right. can take, yeah, you can take, you know, <laughs> two rods and just have one side of your kayak, have two rods and then a, a paddle holder that can go to any, you know, depth off the kayak itself that you want it to. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, we're, we're just trying to continue to give more options for that, you know, to have one that sits low, one sits high. Um, you know, we very well may make like a, a flex rod, you know, X, true like XD uh, where, you know, you, you know, you, you can't in, instead of that being a paddle holder in the top, it is a third rod, you know, with, with some other options, you know, we're, we're always going to evolve our product, but um, but you know, to get that, be able to release that when we did, you know, last summer and to have it take off and sell as many as we have, it's, it's been pretty cool to see that product kind of launch and just become our number one seller, which it is right now. Oh yeah. I can I tell you the second I saw the Facebook ad for it, I text Brad and I sent a picture. I was like, dude, he was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I've already ordered four of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know everybody's probably tired of me posting about it and talking about it on the show and stuff. But dude, I well, love them. <laughs> well, what, but what you did also was cool because you were able to mount it on an inflatable, and yep. I never. Yeah. Even, you were the first to do that. Um, yes. To, to put that on that that Instar, which I ended up trading some product to Mark to get me at one of those. You brought it over on the backpack, so I'm excited yep. to go out on that Instar, that inflatable, and and play around with and see what other cool products we can make for boats like that. Inflatables is going to be, it's going to be a huger part of the market. I mean, it already yep. is. I mean, from two years ago to now, it's, it's kind of, it, it's becoming a viable option. You know, it was something that a lot of regular kayakers kind of not, not made fun of, but kind of didn't take it serious. And now that everyone's is starting to take it serious yep. and you're seeing that I track nine from Hobie, you're seeing some of these other products, uh, there's other companies working on some things, you know, I can't go farther than that, but, but people are out there getting inflatables more involved because they want stability. They want it to be lightweight and they want mm -hmm. it to be cost effective and, and, and some of them with propulsion. So when you put all that together, I mean, it's a convenient way to fish sometimes, especially when you're hiking to hard reach areas or flying. Like for me, I'm, I'm excited about that instar because I'm going to take it with me next time I go out to Yosemite. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to, I want to, I want to go to the Tetons, get on like, you know, Lake Lee or, or Lake Jenny parts of like, well, you know, very, 
you know, that's a big lake, but, but, but to get on some of those, those harder to reach areas where you got to hike to, to get to, that's a perfect, perfect oh, yeah. setup for that. So, you know, to be able to put our products and in addition to that is, is pretty killer. And our yeah. tray will, by the way, our tray does fit that seat. So our, our LP002 oh, yeah. model does fit that, 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 uh, that Instar and also the Hobie Lynx and the Hobie iTrek seat as well. See, you're you're already ahead of the game with the inflatable market market, and I think yeah, yeah. within the next couple of years, you're going to start seeing more inflatables, and they're going to have motors on it. Like, Jeff oh yeah, hundred percent. So if you come, if you start making those mounts now, oh yeah, it they're going to take off. Oh um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've we we you know, I think at the Paddle Sports Retailer Show in 2019, I was approached by by four different inflatable companies um, to be able to. Um, you know, be able to work, you know, they had them approach me and I was, mm -hmm. I was able to be able to go over to their booths and look at some of their products and they all wanted a lot of this stuff that you're talking about now. They wanted it then. Mm -hmm. And I think now it's more of a realistic time to, to bring a lot of that to pass because mm -hmm. it, it's a viable part of the kayak fishing community now. Like it's a great lightweight option you know, to hit skinny water now. I mean, that Instar, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so jacked about it. I mean, I, I, um, I showed Charles, my business partner, I showed him today, you know, that, that product, that Instar product. And he was like, oh, wow. And I'm like, yeah, this is, this is now, this is happening, man. Yep. These kinds of vessels are, are, uh, are realistic. Fish. I mean, you're going winter fishing, Brad, and I'm, you know, yeah. like, you're people think yourself, I'm crazy. Yeah. Which you're not. I mean, you're catching <laughs> yeah, fish no. is what you're doing. I mean, they're they're safe as can be. I mean, yeah. I I feel more stable on that thing than I do like any some other kayaks out there I've been on. Yeah, well, you know, Brad, I don't know if people realize this, but that, um, the one thing unique about Columbus Fishing Expo, it's got a kayak demo pool. Yep. And yeah. Brad got on. He got on a couple of vessels that he got on that N Star, and he was standing up on it, doing yoga on it, doing yep. all this <laughs> crazy cool stuff on it. <laughs> and showing off the stability, I think you even stepped towards the bow of it, you know, farther than I would have ever gone. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's a realistic craft. I mean, mm -hmm. I, and when I lifted it up, you lifted it up over your head like it was nothing. Yep. You know, what, what was it, like 25, 30 pounds maybe? Th yeah, 31. Yeah. Yeah, 31 so, pounds. I mean, and then, and then, you know, and then deflated in your pack, it's like less than 40 pounds, I think. Yep. So, yeah, with, that's with the pump and everything. I mean, and the yeah. seat strapped to the outside of the pack. I think with the with the pack, yeah. it's like forty one and a half pounds, which is yeah. like I put it on my back. It's nothing. You could go for a hike with that. Be okay. Oh yeah, like you get on an airplane with that, fly to wherever, and now have your boat, your boat that you know that that you've crafted and tailored for your own, you know, for your own experience. Have that with you at all times. You go to Europe or wherever with that. I mean, that's pretty. Yeah. That's that's what I, about the inflatable thing I love. Or if you live in an area where you can't store a kayak, you know, you live in an apartment complex or you live somewhere where you may be limited about, you know, how you can store it. Now you've got an option to have mm -hmm. it in your in your bedroom closet, you know, yep. and that, and take that with you on the weekends or do whatever, you know. So I just think it's really cool to have options like that out there. And then now us developing products for those things. Yeah. It only make it only makes sense, you know. I'm uh I'm glad you got one because I I feel like we're gonna see some cool stuff from Yak Gadget. 100, 100. percent I've been wanting yep. to do it forever, and now having one in the shop now, it's 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 happy fun time now. You know, we get to <laughs> make some really cool stuff, and and, and you know, and, and again, it's like I've said it, you know, from day one. You know, it's the consumers are benefiting from having other companies like this out there. And, yep. And we're able to, again, we have the flexibility to focus on some of these different things. The way we make our products, of course, is, you know, it, it, it might cost a little bit more per product to make for us, but uh, it gives us ultimate flexibility in what we make and how we, you know, how we get it out to the market. So for me, this is, um, this has been, I mean, we're looking into, you know, thermoforming, doing some other uh, explorative, you know, techniques and making products. So we've already been approached by several plastic injected molding companies to mold some things and that's definitely on the horizon but the way we've been making stuff for the last you know two and a half to three years um 
the way we do it is still a little different than other people that may do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so now taking that and then now going to this next stage of level products, we probably, we're working on a, a whole line of products coming out very soon. I can't really talk uh, any more about it, but we've got a whole new line of things coming out, like probably in the next couple of months we've got even before that. Uh, and then we've got uh, another product that's just been kind of sitting around that we've been kind of waiting to release that I think for some of these pedal drive motor driven kayaks, it's going to give you some mounting options that you ordinarily wouldn't have. You may look at a, another couple of brands wishing you had a couple of their options. And now this is going to give you a non-drill option to put one on your boat mm. within a second. So we've got some cool things like that kind of swirling in the, you know, in the ether there waiting to be released. So I think you guys are going to like what we're coming out with. Oh yeah. I'm pumped. He, he just, he just set the, uh, set the stage for show number five. <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah. Yeah. He got, uh, John has the bag here. Uh, is that what you want to talk about a little bit? You want to talk about that? Yeah. I mean, this is like our quick pack seat bag, you know, it's not a, it's not a new product. Um, we had one of the, you know, we we had a smaller version of this when we, we when we first released it. No one really had their own kayak bag that they were selling, really, it seemed. And then, again, customer feedback. Everybody said, you know, we love the quick pack, but we'd love it more if it was wider and, and if it had longer straps for some of the bigger kayaks, like the new canoe seats, which I love, by the way, uh, the Hobie seats, the you know, to fit some of those others. And now we have a cam buckle strap with a very long strap. Now it fits every kayak seat, the frame base seat that's out there on the market. And then we gave you the ability to put your Plano 3600. I mean, I'm sorry, 3700. Again, it's been yeah. a long time, man. Uh, <laughs> again, it says 3700. I, I, can, I can prove it. 3700. Uh, so, <laughs> You put your, you know, you're playing on 3700. You can put two of them in here. You, again, you have uh, a huge uh, deep pocket. Then you have another side pocket right there. Uh, so you have three ways to store things, and then you still have your D rings on the side, so you can, you know, uh, attach that to your feet in different ways as well. You got these long camouflage straps that you know allows you to kind of, uh, you know, tailor it down. So once you put it on your seat, you can actually snip these. And actually, uh, take a cigarette lighter, cauterize them, so you can. Mm. We gave you plenty of straps that you can kind of custom for your own boat. That's that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah I, I was know. wondering what to do with the last little bit of that strap on mine. Yeah, I know you just posted a picture about you know having your setup on yours, and I just when I got it, I uh, instead of having all the bags from all the lures and stuff I bought at the show, I was like, I want to see how much I can stuff in this. And I mean, I can tell you, I had bags on bags on bags of Z-Man and like the new Berkeley Gilly. I have like six of these; they're all the same size. They fit in there great. Um, but I just loved it because I mean, yeah, like you said, you can fit thirty-seven hundreds in there to make it easier to get to your everyday stuff, and then it has you know, two deep pocket zippers on it that, you know, in Ohio, we have to register all our kayaks regardless of motor or not. And if I can just put all my registration info right there, if DNR ever stops me for registration, I can literally pull it out and boom, it's there. So oh. John you. disappeared. I don't know if uh, his phone died or what, but uh, the joy of technology. I don't know, man. It's all good. Yeah. The last few minutes have been kind of, on or off with his mics but um yeah i don't know i think we've hit everything dude uh there he is yeah i must say yeah he's back welcome Maybe, back there we go we you there he's kind of there kind of there, there. Kinda he's here in spirit oh, i uh John, you're cutting in and out a little bit. We were actually, we thought you might have lost power to your phone or something. So we were going to uh, close the show out if that's fine with you. Yeah, we can't, we can't hear him. But uh, yeah, dude, uh, any final thoughts on anything on anything? Yeah, uh, Gadget? I tell you what, I mean, just the stuff he's been making has been insane. Um, and saying he's going to be 
releasing so much this year. I'm just excited to see what's coming out. Um, everything he went on, you know, he just talked about everything he makes is functional and it, it works. And if everything, you know, everything's going to be like that coming forward, I'm, I'm super pumped to see what else I can add to make my life not only easier, but maybe help me in an aspect to, to you know, catch more fish or just fish in a, a, a more comfortable environment. So I'm, I'm super pumped. Um, great company to get your stuff from, you know, as John said, I mean, great owner. I mean, it's, it's a no brainer in my opinion. Right. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that. I mean, I've been using Yak Gadget for a few years now. And love everything that I have so far, but uh, yeah, I just want to take the time to thanks, uh, thank John. He dropped out again uh, yep. for coming on the show and talking about the products and all that stuff. So uh, anything else you want to add, dude, before we close it out? No, I mean, thanks, John. Like, like Brad said, coming on, talking to us a little bit, taking some time out of your busy schedule to, you know, let the consumers know what's coming and what to be looking forward to. Um, no, I mean, I really appreciate you allowing me to be a co-host tonight. It was awesome. Uh, a great, great time. I look forward to hopefully doing it again sometime in the future. Um, but no, that's all I've got. Sweet. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. If you've made it this far, uh, you've been listening to the final cast on Pound on the Fin podcast. Uh, have a good one. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode here on Paddle and Finn. Be sure to drop a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or smash that subscribe button on any platform you're listening in on. Be sure to check us out on Waypoint TV, waypointtv.com. Make sure you sign up for the Fantasy Kayak Fishing League at paddleandfin.com forward slash fantasy. You could support this show through Patreon, patreon.com forward slash paddle and fin. Don't forget to check out the website paddleandfin.com. Catch us on YouTube. If you got a question, comment, or want to see a future guest on the show, be sure to email us at paddleandfin at gmail.com. Shout out to our show supporters, Yak Gadget. You can check out all the fine kayak accessories at yakgadget.com. Pelican Professional. For all your cases, coolers, and lighting needs, go to pelican.com. Rocktown Adventures, your Midwest premier paddle sports destination. Go to rocktownadventures.com. Eastport Marina, the beautiful destination on Dale Hollow Lake. If you're looking for lodging, kayaks, kayak accessories, or anything fishing related on the beautiful Dale Hollow Lake, go to eastport.info. And Jig Masters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and fill your tackle boxes today.